Welcome everyone and thank you for uh, coming to join me in this talk about managing wellness uh, in times of uncertainty. So um, I just wanted to quickly tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a therapist in uh, traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture and, um, and uh, energy healing. Uh, I was previously a chartered accountant um, and uh, I am a survivor, uh, a three-time survivor of cancer. Uh, so that's me in my hospital bed. So, um, and also I'm the co-founder of Innocence, uh, um, Innocence, a company dedicated to event wellness since 2008. So uh, let's get talking about managing wellness in times of uncertainty. So let's start with what is wellness? Um, so perhaps it's about feeling good, feeling good physically, mentally and emotionally. Perhaps it's about being happy, finding some inner peace inside you. Or perhaps it's about feeling balanced. And perhaps feeling balanced is a little bit of each of those things. So what are people's main challenges in these times of uncertainty? Well, um, there is a lot of fear and worry about job security um, and uh, financial stability. Um, there's um, concerns about uh, whether or not your your businesses may be able to go forward uh, that you've you've invested a lot of time in over these years, um, but definitely there's a lot of uncertainty over the future of the industry, and that can cause a lot of anxiety for us. We've had to deal with a lot of change, um, uh, living in confinement, working from home, trying to balance our work life with our family life and ch with children, for example. Perhaps some of you are living in isolation on your own and, and has had to deal with living, um, uh, li with, living with loneliness on your, on your own. Or perhaps you've be even been affected by the virus itself um, with family and friends. So either way, there's a lot of stress factors, very important stress factors that um, cause anxiety and fear and a lot of emotions um, and, and a lot of emotions happening. And, uh, and, quite, and in these uncertain times, perhaps um, a multiple, a multiple um, stress um, challenges. So a quick poll, how have your stress levels changed in these uncertain times? And let's see uh, what the results are. Uh, so we're seeing a lot, a lot of people are having uh, up and down, feeling up and down. Um, a few people are feeling less stressed or more about the same because it could be some benefits of not traveling so much, having a little bit less work. Um, but Overall, generally, we are we see at least 50, 60, 80, 90, about 90% of the people have more stress in their lives due to these uncircumstances. So uh, that's pretty high. We're, we're talking about over 90%. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about stress. We don't have a lot of time about stress. You'll see that the, um, the issues that we're having um, can, can have a great impact on our mental health. But I just wanted to talk about stress because uh, stress being the anxiety worry fear um, also has an important impact in our physical bodies as well because when we are stressed or when we feel threatened um, we have uh, what we call the uh, the fight or flight response or the fight or flight or freeze response um, and that's when uh, the body uh, prepares itself to fight or flight or, or run for its life. So it's a, like a survival mechanism. And the physiology is, of this is that the body starts pumping adrenaline into your body. Your, your heart starts to beat faster. Your blood pressure goes up. And some of the resources from your less important systems in this time of survival, like your um, digestive system or your immune system, resources get taken from there to get to go to the muscles in your arms and legs to fight, to run, and then goes to the brain so that you remain, uh, so you stay alert uh, in preparation for this fight. So, um, so what happens is that your body can recover from this quite quickly, 
But obviously, if this is long term, which um, this, uh, the uncertainty looks like it's not going to be for a short while, then it can start having a long term effect on the body. So you can see how your immune system can uh, decrease your, uh, your digestive system, you might start having uh, some uh, digestive problems. Um, you might suffer from a lot of tension and pain in the body. And uh, you might have problems sleeping like chronic sleep problems or insomnia because your your brain is so alert so it starts a, a, a downward spiral in terms of your health the last thing i want to talk to you about stress is that we talked about the fight flight or freeze response so if you imagine that little bunny rabbit in the road late at night when you shine your your your, your car lights on it uh, and it just sits in the middle of the road when we're very stressed we can't think straight um and uh it makes it difficult to to decide make decisions and so uh, we come become blocked mentally so uh, that's one of the other issues of uh, being in this stress response so you'd feel totally unbalanced and uh, unable to move forward so um, another factor that um, Another fact that I want to talk to you about is that the, the threat that you have that causes the stress response in you doesn't have to be just um, physical, like a dog chasing you down the road. It can be psychological. So the mere fact that you have uncertainty into the future, a big uncertainty in the future, that can make you feel threatened and cause this reaction. So that's psychological. There's a psychological element of, um, to this. But the, the fact is that the fear is... Um, the fear of this uncertainty is totally subjective because as Winston Churchill said once, when I look back on all these worries, I remember the story of the old man who said on his deathbed that he had a lot of trouble in his life, most of which never happened. Okay. So that's why uh, there is such a trend about uh, being in the now, being in the present moment, because your thoughts on the past um, are just thoughts. They, the past no longer exists and your thoughts and your anticipation and your fear for the future, well, that doesn't exist either. So it's about bringing your mind back into the present moment, being it, bringing it here um, to help you manage uh, your stress, to help you manage your stress levels. And then when you are in the present moment um, and, it's, and your brain isn't occupied with the past and the future, you have space to create change. And in moments of change, there's opportunity. So let's get on with um, looking at how do we manage our wellness. So I want to introduce to you um, a uh, a framework called the wheel of wellness it's a powerful tool because it's a holistic approach to looking at your health and it helps you identify the key elements where you can manage your health so why a wheel um, so let me start with a story uh, so once upon a time uh, my husband and I uh, you might know him guy bigwood uh, we decided to take a sabbatical and cycle around the world and uh, what uh, I realized after we cycled through the Himalayas was that life, the life's journey is very much like cycling through these mountains. So um, you select a path, you set yourself goals, and sometimes there are very unexpected challenges. But what's most important to get you through uh, these challenges and get you through your life, what happens if a spoke becomes wobbly, for example? If you don't look after your wheels, if you don't maintain uh, your wheels, uh, it starts to impact the other spokes. And then those other spokes um, begin to make the wheel wobbly. And finally, the wheel will collapse. So um, it would make it particularly difficult for you to um, get through your challenges when your wheels are broken. Okay, And very difficult when you're in the middle of nowhere and very very far away from any bike shops in my analogy then the wheel becomes your your wellness the wheel is your wellness and the spokes your pillars of of wellness um, to help keep you balanced so when your wheel is true and aligned then you feel balanced 
and able to move forward in life and uh, when your spokes so and, and then you know that if one of your spokes breaks then if we keep uh, if we regularly manage the other spokes and keep that wheel uh, aligned and true then we can keep going forward in life to the best of our abilities in those given circumstances so like your health a good wheel needs maintaining okay so uh, what are the seven key spokes of wellness here i have defined uh, the seven key spokes of wellness to be the mind the body nutrition work lifestyles environment and social a lot of people um, have a lot of stress caused by work for example and in the wheel of wellness so what you can see when we have a lot of uh, stress in our work okay um maybe because we're working a lot of overtime um it's very easy to um stop looking after yourself so perhaps uh, your stress levels go up um, perhaps you stop taking your run which helps you with your stress levels uh, perhaps you start eating uh, junk food or you start skipping your your, your meals um, and then you can't sleep because you're working late into the night and then when you go to sleep you can't sleep anymore and then uh, you also have very little quality time with your with your family and with your friends um, which which is very relaxing for you as well so in our wheel we start reducing all this um, the wellness in each of those areas in our lives okay so what happens to our wheel then so what happens to our wheel is that it collapses um, and so and in the same way your wellness collapses because you you aren't looking you aren't looking after yourself okay so the second example I have uh, Obviously, it's a very simplified um, version of uh, uncertainty. But for example, in times of uncertainty, when we're not very sure about our work and, or we don't have so much work, it would be very easy to fall back into the last example to, to get very stressed and to um, not feel like going out or, or, or just eat constantly because you're nervous. Um, so if we... Uh, knowing how these all impact our, on our wellness, decide to make a special effort in the morning to do like a short five minute meditation or do, do a little bit of yoga, which would, which would cover our mind and our body. Um, and if we decided to make sure that we eat uh, regularly and eat uh, some healthy and eat healthy food, for example, snacking on fruit, and um, make sure at least that we get proper sleep, a proper night's sleep, um, and make sure we get some time in the in, in the outdoors and in the sunshine. So we, when we go out for our sport, and um, and then um, we can uh, and then make a few phone calls or talk to some of our friends um, to share some of our stresses and uh, or maybe just to have some quality time to take our minds off of those things. And you'll see that then. Uh, we can maintain the uh, most of the integrity of our will and we can keep it reasonably balanced in the given circumstances and we can uh, continue moving forward because we feel more balanced okay so just to summarize so the will of wellness is very important um, for uh, managing our wellness because it is a holistic approach uh, it's a powerful tool because it uh, makes us aware of all the areas in our lives where we can impact our wellness and it helps us uh, make informed decisions and small steps from every direction um, to um, help us manage and help us remain balanced despite the circumstances that we're, we're, we're in and it helps us to optimize um, our energies and our health despite the given circumstances. So just to conclude, it's important for us to manage our wheel of wellness in these uncertain times because we need to maintain our immune system strong. We can see the impact of this stress on our immune system. So it's important for us to uh, uh, maintain that. Uh, it's important for us to manage our wheel of wellness because we need to build our resilience so that uh, we can uh, face these unprecedented challenges and changes in our lives. And finally, we need to manage our wheel of wellness because it helps us 
uh, clear space in our minds um, so that we have the opportunity to be creative. And in these uncertain times, um, we need to be creative so that we can create and redesign our futures and our businesses to, um, into the future. So in conclusion, the Wheel of Wellness helps us take control and um, prepares us for uh, facing these uncertain times. Um, so, uh, so that's my presentation, okay? And uh, so I now have questions and answers. How do you rebalance if beside the COVID situation, she's also having to change a routine because she's taking care of her parents 24 seven during this period? So she's even got less time than she had before. Any couple of snippets of advice of what she can do? Thank you for that question. That's very brave also sharing. Um, thank you for that question. Um, what I find is that uh, the, the, the benefit of having the wheel of wellness is that you can make small steps in different areas of your life which will have a big impact on your, on your wellness. So um, there are things that we can't change in our lives. So we're faced with, as I said, we faced, um, some people are faced with multiple challenges. But what you can do, there are areas in your life where you can make sure that you stay well. So, um, or help with your wellness. So for example, making sure that, um, that you sleep well, for example, making sure that you're eating uh, regularly and eating good food. Okay. And although, and sometimes uh, when I feel particularly stressed and have no time, uh, and, it, and it's very easy to forget uh, your exercise or your, or looking after your mental health. Sometimes it's those times that it's the most important um, to do um, uh, some type of mindful um exercise even if it's just a five minute meditation at the beginning of the day and if you can five minutes at the beginning and five minutes at the end then that that can also help so it's having a look at the wellness wheel looking where you're at in each of those and what little minor adjustments small steps we all have to start with small steps okay lovely thank you so i think we can all take that not just conchetta so thank you Janet, over to you for some breathing exercises. We've got a very, very keen set of participants ready here to, to learn how to breathe and relax better. Okay, so I'm going to share with you a very simple exercise, or maybe a, a, it's a two exercise um, uh, technique. It's an exercise of Qigong, which uh, I use very much with my clients to help them relax in moments of stress. So I'd just like you to perhaps move back a bit so you've got some space to move your arms, okay? So make sure you're sitting comfortably. So first of all, we're going to, uh, you can do this exercise standing up, okay? Uh, or sitting down, and perhaps I'll stand up, okay? You just make sure that your legs are shoulder width apart, your feet are shoulder width apart, your knees are nice and relaxed, okay? And what I'd like you to do is uh, to close your eyes, to breathe in as your arms go up, and then breathe out as your arms go down. So first of all, we're going to regulate our, our breathing. So if you could do together with me, okay? So if you could all stand up. Um, so we're gonna breathe in. And then breathe out. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more time, breathing in. Breathing out. That's lovely. And I hope you noticed that by taking control of your, of your breathing and moving your body at the same time, you can see how your breathing is getting slower and slower. And uh, when you breathe out, it actually triggers a, um, a relaxation response in the body. Um, so if you do that, you can do that like um, 
perhaps like five times in the morning, okay, uh, and five times in the evening to help you start and finish the day. But then the next exercise I'm going to do, I think you might see me better if I'm sitting down, okay. We're just going to do this exercise again. We're going to breathe in. And then as we breathe out, we're going to relax that part of the body. So as we breathe out, we're going to relax the forehead, the eyes, the cheeks, the lips, the chest and the belly okay so that final exercise is an amazing exercise makes you very conscious of your body makes you very present and it's very relaxing as well so if you could do like five of the first one and then five of the second one it's a great way just to start the day and end the day okay <laughs>